By impure thoughts, Buddha means your unconscious thoughts. Unconscious thoughts mean that thoughts are constantly happening in your head, but you're totally oblivious of their existence. You have no idea about the roots of these thoughts, but you make decisions and choices in your life on the basis of these thoughts. And this is one of the most major reason why most of us suffer in our life. Whether it is our professional life or personal life, we suffer. When we do things that we do not want to do, we suffer. When we utter words that we regret later on, we suffer. And our unconsciousness makes us do all these things. How many times it has happened to you that you have said really mean things to the people who matter to you a lot? It happens to a lot of us and that too very frequently. Not because we are bad people, but just because we are so much in the grip of these unconscious thoughts. Before we go any further, I want to clarify one thing. That unconsciousness in itself is not really a bad thing. Unconsciousness has positive aspects to it as well. Without discussing these positive aspects, we won't be doing justice to the unconscious processes of the brain. The first aspect is efficiency. Unconsciousness is intelligence in terms of efficiency. On an average, we have around 60 to 70,000 thoughts in a day. Now, this number varies as in different studies, different number has been found, but that is not at all significant. The significant point remains that most of these thoughts are repetitive in nature and are happening in the background of our consciousness. That is in our unconscious mind, thoughts that we are not aware of. Very few thoughts are happening in the foreground of our consciousness, that is our conscious mind. And this unconscious thought takes care of all the routine stuff of your life so that you can function in your daily life in an efficient way. Things like when to brush your teeth, how to drive a car, how to hold a small conversation, all these trivial stuff of your routine life are being taken care by your unconscious thought processes so that there is a certain context for the conscious mind to focus on the things that are really important, that are really urgent. So this is efficiency and it has been found in many studies that when we first start learning any skill, major part of our brain is involved into learning that skill. But when we do that thing over and over again for so many times, we become efficient at it. That thing becomes automatic because now our unconscious part takes care of performing that skill. So this is intelligence in terms of efficiency. Without it, we will always feel drained out. If we are going to put all our conscious energy into doing the routine and trivial stuff of life, we will feel exhausted. So this is something that Buddha cannot be against. Second aspect is creativity. Throughout the history, when people were facing any sort of creative blocks, either in the field of science, music, poetry, out of nowhere an idea popped up in their head. As if someone had delivered that idea to them. When they were least expecting the breakthrough, it happened. Now people who have a rational bent of mind credit this to the unconscious processes of the brain. These are the kind of people who would want to take credit for the breakthroughs. On the other hand, there are more heart-oriented people. These are the people who would say that I did not write poetry. Poetry chose me. Poetry happened through me. I was simply a medium. People who have written about creative processes, people like Elizabeth Gilbert who also has a TED talk, Stephen Pressfield who has written a great book, The War of Art. When you listen to these people, at first, their ideas sound really absurd to your intellect. Elizabeth Gilbert even goes on to say that ideas are always floating around, they are looking for partnership with people who can execute them. It sounds absurd at first, but if you read her book, you find all her experiences, all her perspectives quite convincing because it is her own reality, her own truth. So if you have no judgments about these things, then you don't get into the problem of being for or against any of these. The significant point here remains that human beings have this innate capacity to have ideas or insights that are beyond the conception of your conscious mind. And this to me is magic. This to everyone should be magic. And a man like Buddha cannot condemn these processes of the unconscious. So if efficiency is alright, if creativity is alright, then what is it that Buddha is against? Buddha is against the efficiency that most of us have in our life in terms of creating misery. This is the problem. Most of us have really become efficient in creating anger, jealousy, hatred and all kinds of addictive behavior. And we are not even aware of them. These are our unconscious habits 
our conditioned responses and if we are not going to do anything about them these habits will become more and more intense in our system buddha says whoever follows the impure thoughts not only suffers in this world but in the next world following impure thoughts means following your conditioned responses your unconscious behavior right now you are not going to accept it but there is a certain pattern behind all your responses so i want you to identify your patterns if it is anger that is bothering you find out why do you become angry when do you become angry are there certain people who trigger this anger in you you have to find the trigger points in terms of situations people circumstances if it is smoking that bothers you find out when do you smoke why do you smoke are there certain compulsive people around you who make this urge to smoke much more strong in you find out there will be a certain pattern some people become angry just because they are going through financial crisis some people become angry just because they have a lack of communication in their relationships you have to find your own patterns and then you have to become aware of the trigger points for example in the case of smoking you will find that sometimes you light cigarette just because you are bored then you have to become aware of the trigger points that is boredom in the moment of boredom you have to become aware now i am bored now the urge to smoke can come any time because i have done this thing so many times and so often it is an automatic behavior for me if you are going to become aware of your anger or your smoking habit after you have done them then there is no point in becoming aware of it because by then the damage has been done but when we become aware of these things in the moment of the trigger points then we can do something about them and remember it is going to be difficult at first there will be a lot of discomfort into breaking these automatic behaviors because they have become so strengthened in our system we have done these things for so long and for so often there will be discomfort but it is all about embracing the discomfort if there is no discomfort then you are not making any substantial change in your life so break this pattern otherwise buddha says that you will suffer not only in this world but in the next world too when buddha is talking about this world and the next world he is not talking of some other dimension where you will go after this life is over he is referring to this moment and the next moment pay attention to it because this is the heart of this sutra something of this moment will be carried forward in the next moment today is the womb to your tomorrows so if today you are living with the ways of impure thoughts the conditioned responses that are making you suffer then tomorrow your suffering is bound to multiply because you are learning the ways of suffering you are becoming habituated to it tomorrow you will become efficient in creating more and more misery in your life more and more suffering in your life so if you want to change you have to do something about it right now most of the times we postpone the change we think that we are going to change tomorrow we are going to get rid of our anger tomorrow but change is not something that happens in time change happens right now the radical change happens in the now you have to break the pattern right now you don't understand if you are postponing the change then tomorrow this tendency to postpone will become much more strong the same law applies buddha further says in both world he suffers and how greatly when he sees the wrong he has done when i first read this statement i thought buddha is exaggerating it a little bit but now i totally agree with him first off he is talking in metaphors and when someone is talking in metaphors a lot has to be communicated in very few words hence he is using this world and the next world but the point remains that we actually suffer and that too massively here particularly he is talking about the suffering that is bound to happen in the future see most of the times we do not want to take responsibility for our suffering we always want to play victim but this victimhood is not going to take us anywhere in our life taking responsibility well and in retrospect you will acknowledge this thing that all this while you chose the ways of suffering you manufactured your own hell no one else forced you and hence you are responsible for it your suffering is bound to multiply upon acknowledging this fact first you suffer when you respond with your conditioned choices then again you suffer when you realize that you chose these conditioned responses if you really want to change your life then you have to do something about it right now remember the radical change always happens in the now first off realize that you are living under the grip of these conditioned responses 
Second, you have to identify the patterns of these conditioned responses and you have to become aware of the trigger points. Third, you have to embrace the discomfort that comes when you break these conditioned responses. This is how you are going to taste freedom and awareness in your life. So don't postpone the change. If you have found any sort of authenticity in my words or in the Sutra of Buddha, then don't postpone. Do something about it right now.